Hey guys, it's been a really long time since I made a video. Um, about a month, I think, and maybe even more. And a lot has happened. So, um, we ended up taking a trip to Mexico. Actually, I think my last video I posted it just after we got back, but I'd filmed it before I left. So we went to Mexico with my husband's work, and we had an amazing time. Um, it was my son's first big vacation, and he did great. He did not love the ocean or the sand. As soon as we sat him down in the sand, he took his hand out of his mouth, plunked it all slobbery, plunked it in the sand, and then quickly stuck it back in his mouth and started to cry. He did not love that. And I tried sitting him um, in the ocean just where the waves would come up and gently, you know, come over him, and he screamed and cried and did not love that. Um, but he loved the pool, and he loved hanging out on the beach chairs with us and walking around the resort. We went to Chichen Itza, we saw Mayan ruins, we, um, my husband went zip lining and swimming in a cenote, and it was just, it was just, uh, definitely a trip we'll remember for a long time. And then, um, a week later, we went on another trip across Canada. So we went to visit some friends in um, uh, Manitoba. And we... I waved to Mackenzie, the lovely array, in Saskatchewan as we flew over. Um, unfortunately, I didn't stop there, and we weren't able to say hello. Um, but we did go to Alberta and um, hung out with some friends there and I was able to go to um, an l &S, and I have a little bit of haul to show you. Actually, I have quite a bit of haul to show you. Uh, for me, it's a lot anyway. Uh, other people, not so much. Um, yeah, so we've been having a busy time and my little guy's learned to sit up on his own. He has not started crawling yet and uh, I don't know, I'm kind of nervous of that happening because I just don't think I'll be able to keep up with him. But, um, yeah, so things are going good. Um, so I guess I'll just get right started. I don't have too much time to film this video. I think I have about 30 minutes, maybe a little more. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, new starts. I have two new starts. I joined another craft swap, and the theme of this craft swap is cats, tea, and books. Um, the idea is that you send a medium-sized craft, I assume most of them are related to cats, um, you send some tea and two books. Um, one book is one that you, um, one that your partner has mentioned they'd be interested in, and one, then the second one is one that um, you like that you think that your swap partner would like. So, um, anyway, so my craft... My partner mentioned she's a big fan of Pusheen the Cat, so I'm doing this. This is a free pattern I found online, um, and I don't know the name of it, um, and I can't show you a picture because all I have is a chart. So, but it's a sofa, and this is it's really yellow in here today, the coloring, so um, nothing's going to be true to color. But this is actually a, a pretty purple. It's like a a plummy kind of purple couch and there's a little cushion and this is going to be where Pusheen is and there's some back stitching on the top that says home is where your butt is so this is almost done it's got to be mailed mid-may my goal is to finish this by the end of April I don't know if that's exactly gonna happen but we'll see um, I had two pieces my goal um, set as a goal to finish in April this is one of them and um, my other one, um, I did finish, so I'll show you that later, but I did have one finish, and hopefully this one, but I'm, I don't know. And my other start is this Mill Hill kit, Mill Hill beading kit called Fishing Vest. I've never done any beading before, so I thought a Mill Hill kit <clears throat> would be a good place to start. I went to a, um a stitching retreat kind of single day event um, and Nikki North Northrop from Charting Creations was there um, set up a little shop and I bought uh, this kit from her and a couple other things that excuse me a couple other things I will show you 
in the stash, but I finished it. It didn't take me long. It was just a couple of days. Um, yeah, this was this was great. I'd never done any beading before, and I was really nervous. Um, I wasn't sure how to start my thread or finish my thread or... I, I was just... No idea about beading. But the instructions were really good from Mill Hill. And, um... I had some advice from some friends online, and yeah, I got it done. It even has a little, a little treasure right there. Yeah, this is the fishing vest, and I love it. It comes with a magnet, um, so that you can turn it into like a fridge magnet, or instructions to put like a little loop for maybe a tree ornament. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Probably a magnet, but I'm going to put some felt, or this is the back, you can see my my messy back, but I'm going to put some felt on there I think, or some kind of backing material, and then um, and then add on that magnet, but yeah, I, another little finish, like I said, I have, I have two finishes this month so far. Um, okay, so my other finish, this was my, this was when I set for um, a goal to finish for April and I did it. This is Christmas Eve Delivery by the Frosted Pumpkin and I used Whisper Thread for the first time for Santa and I don't know how well you can see yeah he looks kind of fuzzy there his, his hair up here and the, the the um, pom pom on his hat and his beard. I still I was given some um, suggestions online for um, how to make it look fluffier. So some people said to take um, some Velcro and you know rub the Velcro on it um, to make it a little fluffier. And I heard um, to use like a dry toothbrush to make it a little fluffy. And uh, so I might give I think I'm going to give the Velcro technique a try and see how that looks. Um, cause I think it's a little flat right now, but, um, yeah, and I'm going to eventually finish, I think I have enough material here, cause this is, I did it on a pretty big piece, I'm going to finish it into, like, a little cushion, a little tiny pillow that I can either hang on the Christmas tree or maybe just set on the mantle or something. So that's that. Um, gotta start a pile here. So I'll just put it right here. Um, so whips. <clears throat> I'll start with my frosted pumpkin stitch along. My let's go on an adventure. So I started, and so here's the whole thing so far. I'm sure you've all seen this a ton. And this month was Switzerland. So there we go. You see it all there? I think so. The only thing I changed was, as usual, I added in the flag. And can you see that? I added it right there. Um, and interestingly, the Switzerland flag is a square. Um, and I didn't know that. I should have known that, but I didn't. When I looked it up, it was um, a square and not a rectangle, like most flags are. So um, my other flags I did in like a, in a two by three, um, two by three crosses, and this one I did two by two because it's supposed to be a square. So there we go. I had the thought after I had finished that I would like it if the snowflakes. I'm just going to try to make this a little more manageable. There we go. If the snowflakes here, I should have added in a strand of blending filament to make them a little sparkly because I think that would have been really pretty. Um, but I th didn't think of it until I finished and I was not going to frog that and go back and do it. And also, I think it would have been kind of cute if I used some more of the whisper on this little, um, the little sheep up there. But you know, things you think of later after you see some other people's um, designs. I think I, I finished it too quickly. I did this one, I think I finished it uh, within three days of it being uh, emailed to me, so it was pretty quick. But um, it was really, really fun. And I think so far Switzerland might be my favorite block, and I've heard 
a number of people say that. Okay. All right, so I was doing a sale in Cross Stitch and Discuss um, called, I think it's called You Had Me at Reading, and I mentioned this in uh, probably my last video. The, um, the goal was to finish a piece related to books in three months, and the three months is up in May, so I have to have this finished in May, and this is, it's not going to happen. I tried, but for a while I just couldn't get into it, and now that I am into it, um, it's not going to happen, but here it is. This is the bookshelf. The bookshelf by Little House Needleworks. And I have finished... Here we go. I've... Oh my goodness. I don't know where I'm going here. There we go. I've finished the Secret Garden. Um, I do have a problem. So here's my problem, and I'm open to suggestions. Okay, so it all started with this tree. This tree is slightly off. I, I put some of the, I did the leaves first, and a section of the leaves on this side were off by a, uh, miscounted by a stitch or two, and so my tree is leaning a little because I did the branches and the bark later. And of course they had to line up per at the proper spot on the leaves. Okay, so that's where it starts. Then, before I did the branches though, after, but still after the leaves, I stitched this lady part of the Sense and Sensibility um, section. But she is counted from the end of the leaf. I did not line her up with this border, this like um, band here. I counted her from the leaves, so the leaves were miscounted. So she is now off by, uh, I think she's off by two stitches. But here's the real problem, and it, it's not as easy to see why it's a problem here as it is in the chart, but I'm not going to show the chart. But the wording sense and sensibility. Okay, the word sensibility fits exactly between the end the end of the picture and the lady and I think there's like one or two stitches I think there's two stitches between the end of the Y and the lady so because I'm already off by two the word sensibility is not gonna fit so I'm not sure what to do I really don't want to frog her out because it's quite a few stitches um, my only thought so far is look at this Y the long tail of the Y is really is pitched really steeply so my only thought is I could change that so that it takes up less space I think that might be my best bet but let me know what you think because I'm not sure what to do about that um, yeah I, I'm actually really loving this now um, it took me a while um, there's a lot of a lot of this color brown that's in the, the words here all the words are in that color and uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm feeling that shade of brown. Um, but anyway, I'm really enjoying that. So let me know what you think about my positioning issue. Um, but I'm definitely not going to finish that in time. And there, I think there was a prize for if you finished your your chosen piece which within the three months, you'd get entered into a draw for a giveaway. Um, but it's not going to happen. But that that's fine. I actually don't need more stuff. Okay, my next one that I'll show you, and I've, I've made quite a bit of progress on this for my own timeline, um, not compared to others, but this is the All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna Designs. I say it wrong every time. No, Barbara Anna. Okay. I can never remember if it's Anne or Anna. Um, so I've been working, I have this laurel wreath done, and I've been working on the house, and the flowers, and there's a, oh, I'm in the wrong spot, there, teapot and a teacup. So I'll show you that. Um, 
So Stephanie made a comment about the windows in the house, about them not being filled in. And so it was kind of a, I was kind of, it was like a, a running joke that I wasn't going to finish the windows until the very end because it was going to drive her crazy. But I actually went to do them the other day and I can't find my floss for those windows anywhere. So I guess they're actually not going to get done for a while. But here we go. I absolutely love this. This is done on a 40 count linen and country mocha from Picture This Plus. And so there's my little teapot and teacup. There we are. And I do have a little start on the on the garden in front of the house right there. So there. Um this is done in 40 count linen, one over two. And um like I've said a few times, I find it hard to work on this one in the evening because of the count. I need a lot of light, and I don't have a, a like a, a stitching lamp, an alt light or anything. So I just rely on regular room lights and daylight. So I don't really work on this one in the evening. So it goes very, very slowly. And uh, I'm gonna apologize, but I'm gonna try and put some of this stuff away while while the camera's running. Okay, my next one I'm going to show you is my giant Harry Potter. Okay, I don't have a picture of what it's supposed to look like here with me. Again, in case you haven't seen my other ones, um, most people know this piece is massive. Excuse me, but I'm doing it on, um, I believe it's... I need to write these things down, but I think it's 28 count, but I'm doing it over one, um, so I actually don't need that much fabric at all. But here's oh, here's what I have. Uh, all right, there we go. So since my last video, I'm not sure where I was last time, but a might have been working on the green, but I got um, the green and the Slytherin banner done, except for the, the bottom of the banner here. Uh, with the points is actually another page, so I didn't do that. Um, but I have the Ravenclaw banner started here, and I finished Hermione. So I feel like I'm actually making some progress because I was able to get I was able to get a a character finished. So that's good, not just border. My original thought was to do all the border around first and then fill in, but. The border no kill, near kills me, and I've seen some people um, in different groups um, struggling with getting the border to line up properly. Um, because after a while, in this small like stitching over one, I find the counting gets kind of tricky for me. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm I'm kind of going page by page. So that's that. And I still don't have all the threads for it. I'm just sort of kidding up as I go because there's tons. And um, I just, for me, there's no point in having all those threads hanging around if I'm not going to use them for a while. Okay, so the next one is, this is the piece I started. I got this for Christmas for my parents. So this is the one I only carry over from 2015, technically, because I started it Christmas Day. Um, my Old World Map from Janlin. It's a Janlin kit. And I've been working, so the page cuts straight down the middle. So I have half the sun, and I'm work. I'm working on part of this ship here. And, oh, no, this way. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, the sun, part of the ship, and this cluster of trees here. And I've just started a little bit on this First Nations man over here on the side. I'll show you that. I find if I don't point out on the pattern where I am first, um, I don't know, there's not much context to go by when you see some of these because they're so little finished. But there we are. Okay. Oh, it's hard when I can't see. There we go. So we've got half of the sun there, and these are the sails on the boat, and some of the trees. So. I've been mainly focusing on the green in these trees. 
um, this last little bit and a little bit of the blue here in the water. That's been my main my main focus since my last video. I don't tend to work on this one as much as the others and I'm not sure why but as soon as I do um, I really enjoy it. I think it's um, the bright colors and um, the different um, like the different motifs on there that I really enjoy working on. Okay, I'm only going to show one more. I do have two other whips, but I really haven't done anything worth showing on them. So one is the Disney Castle, and the other is my Dimensions, my small country bath um, Dimensions. I hadn't touched at all, so I'm not going to um, show those. But this is my last one. I think I think I've showed this in. This is in my other, last video. So this is Chocolate Mania, and it. Oh, here's the picture first. I'll show you this. So this is Chocolate Mania. And it is in the August September 1989 issue of Cross Quick magazine. I'm stitching this up for a friend of mine. She doesn't she doesn't know that I'm doing it, so I think she's gonna be pretty excited when she gets it. Um, but here we go. I would have a lot more progress on this, except so this here is a, let me show you a picture again, this is a chocolate layer cake, and it's got the three layers. When I was stitching it, I had more done, I had the three layers, except I accidentally put the third layer down here, where this should be the last layer. So, my cake was a whole layer too low. Um, I guess I just got in the zone too much and um, lost where I was. Um, so I've been pulling it out and I now have to redo some of the cake, but at least that's my only problem area and it's, it's really easy. It's blocks of solid color. So that's where I am. Um, I had a lot of fun with the back stitching on this and normally I'd wait until the end, but, um, it was really, it was actually really fun to do. So I think this might be, if I'm going to have to get the other one done for before the end of May. But I think then this is going to be my goal to finish this in May. Um, I am participating in Mania. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to talk about it in this video uh, too much. I might do a separate video and show you all my, my plans for Mania. That's what I'll do. Um, I, I originally was planning to do... 10, 10 starts, one every three days. I thought that would be manageable. Um, that way if like one day things got hectic and I couldn't do my start, I knew I had two more days of grace time. So every three days to get it in. As I was kidding things up and I found things I wanted to do and um, I think my count just before I did start this video was 12. I think I have 12. So by the time May 1st rolls around, I think I'll have 15. I think I'll have all 15. So what I'm going to do, I think, is do my 15 starts, and the, and I'm probably going to do them then every second day. And the days in between, I think I'm going to focus on finishing this. So I would love to get this finished by the end of May. That way I can FFO it and mail it off to my friend. Um... I'm getting kind of overwhelmed with how many whips I have and Mania is just gonna like make that crazy so I want to try to get my smaller ones out of the way and some of my Mania ones are going to be small so um, I would love to get like one small a month finish I know some people that's no problem and they get lots of finishes but I don't know I'm a slow stitcher and I don't have a lot of time so hopefully this is one is my goal I'm putting it out there finish this by the end of May. Okay, so those are my whips. Um, I don't have any kind of rotation um, for these. I try to not work on the same thing for too long, so I, I don't, it's not a strict rotation, but I kind of think to myself, what do I want to work on today? And then, like, what haven't I worked on in a while? And I dig it out and I work on it. Um, I can't, I might have to come up with a rotation after Mania with all my all my projects but um I don't know that seems like 
too much work to me and I don't know if it'll be fun anymore, but we'll see. Okay, haul. I will start with some threads. So I was in a little um, like hand crafty specialty shop when I was visiting my parents and um, they don't they don't sell um, like needle craft things. A little bit of felting, but it's mostly I guess knitting and stuff is considered needle craft. It's a lot of knitting crocheting. So basically they don't sell like embroidery stuff I should say. Um, but for some reason they had some, they did have a few metallic threads. And these are really pretty and they're really soft. They don't feel anything like the DMC light effects, thank goodness. And they don't seem to be the type that fray, so I guess like a one ply maybe. Um, and they're made in Spain and their color Color Solido, S-O-L-I-D-O, -O, is the brand. So if you know anything about those, let me know. Um, they're really pretty. So this is, you're not going to see the colors very well, but I'll just, I'll try. So this is like a gray, a sparkly grayish silver, but it's more gray than silver. That's actually pretty close. That's not too bad. And I got this really pretty, like, Christmassy red. It's a tiny bit brighter than that. There we go. Yeah. And here's like a pinky, pinky, purpley. Oh, I wish that wasn't so yellow in here. There we go. I think the problem is my light bulbs aren't like a blue or white light. They're, they're like a warm yellow. And this is a really gorgeous, like turquoise blue. That's pretty true to color right there. Yeah. So... If you know anything about this company or these threads, I haven't Googled them yet, and I should. Um, but again, color, maybe color solido means color fast, because hmm, it's Spanish. Let me see. Um, oh, here it says Presencia. Maybe that's it. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-I-A. That must be the brand, Presencia. Yeah. So... Okay, so I bought, so when I was at my, um, at my stitching day, um, I mentioned that, um, Nikki, uh, Nikki was there, and her last name just escaped me, like it, Nikki Thorup was there, and, uh, she had set up a little shop, and I had got that fishing vest, so that was one thing, but then I got some patterns, and, um, these are going to be showing up in Mania, I hope. This one, after, after New New York, everybody's seen it. Let me take it out, though. Um, Jessie Marie has this, um, I think, Mamula, is that, is that her YouTube name? She has it. There we go. This, I ordered, I've ordered the specialty threads for this, um, and they should be here maybe a week and a half or something. The only way this won't show up is if I cannot find a piece of light gray linen. I really want to do it on the light gray. I do have a piece of blue. Jessie Marie is doing hers. She mentioned her video on a light blue. I might break that out. Um, but I really like the way it looks on this like light blue, silvery. What are they calling for? A 32 count water lily linen from Witch Elt. So, um... I don't know. I don't have easy access to pretty linen here. Um, and with our Canadian dollar being so bad, I'm not too keen on ordering right now from the States. So my options are limited. We'll see. If I can come across an option, I will do this in Mania. Um, but I did order the threads, and it has uh, calls for DMC Classic Color Work sampler threads and weeks. So that's quite a lot. It'll be fun. Um... I bought Around the World, oh, here we go, Some glare, Around the World in 80 Days from Little House Needleworks, and this is one of my absolute favorite books. Traveling is like my favorite thing to do, so um, this book, I love it, I've loved it since I was young, um, and this will be starting for Mania, I've ordered the threads, and... I'll show you the fabric in a minute. 
that I'm going to use for that. last one I bought from Nikki and this is Miracle Grow by Ink Circles. Here we go and I think this is hilarious. Let me read the back to you. It says, so it's the fifth in a series of bad neighborhoods designed especially for those of you who have seen enough charts of charming sweet abodes to fill the globe. Welcome to our little farm where we grow all the food ourselves. Are these not the biggest strawberries you've ever seen? right there. Um, and what do you mean you don't have blue apples where you come from? There's blue apples on the trees. And my favorite are these mutant chickens. Because I don't know how many of you know, but I have backyard chickens and uh, so, but they, they don't they don't look crazy like that. Um, yeah, so Miracle Grow. This one and Around the World in 80 Days are going to be stitched on a 32, it's 32 count um, antique white linen from Zweigart, but, um, so as you can see, they're both on a, like, beige color, so I didn't have any nice beige linen, um, so I did have that antique white linen, and I dyed it myself, and this is not, let me see. This is not true to color. Mm, that's too bad. It's pretty close. That's pretty close. Um, it's kind of a peachy, peachy, peachy brown color. But I tea dyed this. And if you're interested in the process I used, um, I can talk about it in another video. Just let me know. It was really easy and took a while, but it was really easy. Um, all you need are, I use 10 tea bags, water, and salt. That was it. And it turned out nice and even. I did not want, um, I did not want any modeling or too much modeling. Um, right now I'm not into that look too much, but yeah. So I'm going, this is the perfect size for those two pieces. So if you want to know how I did that, just comment below and maybe I'll do um, a video or even just comment with the instructions for how I did it. It was really, really simple. Anyone could do it. Um, okay, while I was away on my trip, I went to an LNS and I bought, and I'll be starting these for Mania, Dreaming of Daisies by Rosewood Manor. And there it is. Daisies are my favorite flower. And I really love how this looks like, um, um, like the, um, what am I thinking, Nat more naturalist type sketches, notebook sketches that you'd see, um, from people studying, um, studying botany and whatnot, so I really like that, and it says, um, daisies all over in different fonts. So that's really fun, and it calls for all, uh, I think it's all weeks dye works, yep. Yeah. So I bought all of those, and I'm stitching this on a piece of, what do we have here, uh, platinum 32 count. And it says platinum, but it's, I wouldn't call this color a platinum color, it's just a, it's just a light, I wish that, I really wish the color would show up well, but it's just a light, like, creamy, um, like an off-white. It actually matches, if you, if you look up the pattern online, it matches the, um, the model stitch pretty well exactly. So that's that. And I'm rushing now. So I'm, my clock on here says 34 minutes. I don't know what it'll be after I edit it, but... Okay, while I was also away at the same store, I got Blue Delft Sampler um, by Joan Elliott. This, this is, let me do a close-up on it there. So we have an alphabet, numbers, windmills, people, 
welcome and some flowers there we go blue delft sampler my husband actually picked this out he came into the lns with me and must have looked through he's sitting right here but must have looked through every pattern with me and he picked out the blue delft sampler and i think he might have picked out the daisies he really liked it anyway and i'm going to stitch this on oh just a piece of that antique white um linen so actually since i have this here i'll show you the tea dyeing it went from antique white to this that's better there that's more like the color that brown it did cause some fraying um i should have stitched up the edges first but i didn't I also bought a piece of fabric to do by Quaker Genetics. I think I mentioned Quaker Genetics in my last video. My um, by Ink Circles, and I bought um, a piece of gray. I'm not going to show it right now. I'll show it in my Mania video, but it's a um, a piece of darker gray fabric, and I bought all weeks, not the charted colors though, to um, stitch that in. Okay. You guys know I'm a map person. I love them. I am stitching a world map, but I found this on the Canadian, um, it's not stash and load, Canadian buy, Canadians buy and sell, or Canadians only buy and sell. can't remember. Facebook group. It's a kit. I'm not going to take this out. I'm sorry for the glare, but there we go. It's another world map. And it's, uh, Bucilla. I'll show you some close-ups. Um, I really bought this because I love the moons on the top, the moon phases. I love that. So I'm going to start that. And um, my last bit of haul from Easter, my mom got me this um, Victorian charm by Dimensions. You've all seen it before. But I love it. So that's going to be another mania start. So you've already seen half of my mania start. Um, there we go. That's my haul. And I think that's it. Um, so yeah, if you want to know more about the tea dyeing, mention it below. If you have any questions, please put them below. And keep an eye out for my mania starts. I'm hopefully going to record that maybe tomorrow. Alright? Um, oh, and my husband and I did Tracy's talking tag, and I'm going to edit that in here. Um, so yeah, see you later. So we're going to do Tracy's talking tag. Um, I have my husband Robert here with me uh, because he's from a different province in Canada than I am. I'm from Nova Scotia, and he's from Newfoundland. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to see um, how many of these words we actually say differently from each other. Um, so I guess we'll go through the words first and then the questions. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Ant, root, wash, oil, theater, iron, salmon, caramel, fire, water, sure, data or data, um, rune, crayon, toilet, New Orleans, pecan, both, again, probably, spit an image, Alabama, lawyer, coupon, mayonnaise, syrup, pajamas, cot. Okay, and I would say ant, root, wash, oil, theater, but uh, a lot of people from back home would say theater, uh, <laughs> iron, salmon, caramel, fire, water, sure, but again, people from home would say sure, uh, data, or data, I guess it doesn't matter, ruin, crayon, toilet, New Orleans, pecan, both, again, Probably, spit an image, Alabama, lawyer, coupon, mayonnaise, syrup, pajamas, and cot. Alright, so the question, um, I don't know if you've seen these questions before or not. A couple of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You've watched a few floss tube videos with me. <laughs> One or two. Um, oh, here's our little kitty Milo. Um, Alright, question one. What is it called when you throw toilet paper on a house? You toilet paper the house. And I think I'd say TPing. What is the bug that when you touch it, it curls into a ball? Now, I have no idea. I know what other people have mentioned, but 
I I wouldn't know. Um, carpenters, I think, is what we would call them. Like when you peel up a rock, the little gray ones. Is that what I call wood bug? Maybe. Carpenters, okay. I think, is what we would call them as kids. Now I, I'm not sure what they're actually called. Some people have said potato bug or roly poly. Yeah, potato bug is different for me. Potato bug is like a little orange one. That, anyway, looks like a big ladybug. Maybe that's a. Maybe this is a bug we don't really have here. Maybe not. Okay, what is the bubbly carbonated drink called? I'd say pop. Pop. What do you call gym shoes? Sneakers. Sneakers. What do you say to address a group of people? I probably say, "Hey guys." Although where I'm from, um, a lot of people would call a group instead of guys. They'd say buys. Right. So they're looking for the word for people, for the group, like I guys. Guess, I, yeah, I guess. Some people, I, I heard some people in the States say, um, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what they're saying. Like, so the group of people, buys probably, yeah. Buys, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you call the kind of spider that has an oval-shaped body and extremely long legs? I'd say a daddy long legs or dandy long legs. Either one. Daddy long legs? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I call it now. But when I was a kid, we would call those spiders uh, rain spiders. And we had a superstition about not stepping on them because you'd make it rain. You'd make it rain. And we called uh, crane flies daddy long legs. Crane flies are those big gangly flies that act stupidly around your porch light. Oh, yeah. We call those daddy long legs, but they're actually crane flies. I definitely called the spider daddy long legs. Yeah. Um, what do you call your grandparents? I just called them grandma and grandpa on both sides. For me, it would be nanny and poppy. On both sides? Or Nan and Pop. Or Nan yeah. and Pop. As you get older. Yeah, on both sides. Um, what do you call the wheeled contraption in which you carry your groceries at the supermarket? I just call it a shopping cart or grocery cart. Yeah, but I think I've also heard it called a buggy. A buggy. Yeah, shopping buggy. I want to know what people call the area that you put your cart in in the parking lot when you're done with it, I call it a cart corral. Shopping cart corral. Shopping yeah. cart corral. So if you call it something different, comment below because <laughs> I'm dying to know what everybody calls this little area that you put your cart in when you're done. Um, what do you call it when it when rain falls while the sun is shining? That doesn't really happen much here, but I call it a sun shower. A sun shower, yeah. Yeah. What is the thing you change the TV channel with? Um, either a remote, a flicker, or sometimes a clicker. Yeah, I'm good with all three of those. You had another one. Sometimes it's it called the buddy. The but. buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't <But>. call it that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's Tracy's talking tag. Do you have anything you want to add about that? Uh, no, it's fun. Great. Thanks.